Hello friends, welcome to ProTalent and I am Nitin Parmar. I welcome you all for this capsule module on Euthanasia, Assisted Dying Act of New Zealand. We will try and understand what is this act in New Zealand, what are the kind of ideas we know about euthanasia, what is the entire understanding of this euthanasia and then what is the current legal situation of India. We will also look at some good arguments in favor of euthanasia. We will also see some good arguments against euthanasia. Okay, you will be the better judge what you want from the country. Okay, this is what we are discussing about. You can say an act, you can say which was made in New Zealand and there was a referendum uh, was asked from the people. So let us start to talk about this Icha Mrityu. So we all understand a word called Thenia. Euthanasia has two words. One is called EU. That means good. Whenever you have a word called EU, it means good. Okay. So you have a word called euthanasia. You have a word called euphemism. You have a word called eulogy. Okay. Well, next word is called Thenia or Thenos. Thenos is a person who kills. He is known as killer. Okay. So we have a, a very famous villain called Thanos. Okay, so Thenia is a killing. A good way of killing is called euthanasia. So recently, New Zealand, as per their preliminary referendum results, a majority of voters have voted in favor of End of Life Choice Act 2019. So these people were in favor of it. New Zealand is considered to be very advanced nation. The people, they, they want a very good life there. They just do not want a basic living lifestyle. They want a little luxurious lifestyle. So which involves a lot of freedom. Okay. So here we are talking about that issue of New Zealand. According to that law. Remember, this is a very important case to understand for us. What is euthanasia? That new change will help us to understand the entire issue. That is what we are trying to learn. Okay, great. So this is called End of Life Choice Act 2019. So the act meant to give certain terminally ill people the option of requesting medical assistance to end their lives. Okay, so this is for terminally ill people. This is an option available to them and to establish a lawful process for assisting eligible people who are able to exercise that option. One for terminally ill people. Okay, so they on their request, they have an option of requesting medical assistance. Okay, on the other, the other eligible people Okay, they would like to exercise this option of ending life. So that means it is talking about assisted dying, which means doctors and nurses. Okay, they will be giving medication to relieve them from the suffering. Okay, this is very crucial. So here it is called assisted dying. How doctors and nurses can take this decision? So this decision is coming through a legal way now. Okay. While on the other part, you can say when a person takes a medication themselves, that is what the second point, the person is taking medication on his own. Okay. So in a way, you may term this as suicide in our Indian context possible. Okay. So therefore, the acts interprets assisted dying as both euthanasia and assisted suicide. Okay, I hope you understand that one is euthanasia, one person that is doctor or nurses through medical processes are stopping your life. Okay, on the other hand, it is assisted suicide. So while the former 
that is euthanasia refers to the act of deliberately ending person's life okay primarily to end suffering on the other hand it is assisting a person to kill himself or herself this is the idea of this end of life choice act 2019 this is what is happening in you can say new zealand this came because of one person's effort when his wife died he actually started developing this entire communication he started to you can say carry out a lot of seminars to talk about in favor of end of life choice he said this you can say like right to life incorporates end of life choice okay this is how it all started now what is euthanasia and what are the various types so dosto euthanasia is as we talked about it means good death it is a practice of intentionally ending life okay in order to relieve all kind of pain it is also known as mercy killing we all know this okay we all understand this all of us are aware about it now let's talk about their categories one category is called voluntary active euthanasia another is called involuntary active euthanasia another is called physician assisted suicide okay so what is the meaning of voluntary active euthanasia okay so you may ask first question sir what is active euthanasia then there is obviously an opposite word to active called passive euthanasia okay so what is the difference active euthanasia and passive euthanasia active euthanasia where we can say a physician administers some injection okay that is called active euthanasia while passive euthanasia is physician removes life support system and the person dies natural death do you understand the difference i repeat one more time active euthanasia is giving injection and thereby killing someone okay while in passive euthanasia you remove life support system and the person dies naturally okay that is called passive euthanasia so when a physician administer medication to intentionally end patient's life with the mentally competent patient's explicit request okay then that is called voluntarily active euthanasia a patient he himself gives this consent while when a physician administers medication to intentionally end patient's life but without patient's requests that is we can say called involuntarily active euthanasia remember in india we don't have active euthanasia we only have passive euthanasia okay while when we talk about voluntary uh, you can say sorry when we talk about active euthanasia we are talking about you can say voluntarily active euthanasia okay we don't have a concept of involuntarily you can say euthanasia while a physician provides medication at the patient's explicit request with an understanding that patient intends to use this medication so physician is giving medication to the patient himself physician knows for what purpose that medication is provided the patient or the person he himself take that medication then that is called physician assisted suicide okay so let's understand this in indian context india mein there were two very important cases they were the landmark cases in our country one was a very famous case called aruna shanbag versus union of india that is a very famous case wherein we clearly mention that we cannot have active euthanasia aruna shanbag was a nurse she became terminally ill she was in a vegetative state but uh, she was not allowed to give medication to kill herself she died after some 30 years of you can say uh, uh, in coma and she died natural death okay while a second case called common cause that was an ngo 
common cause versus union of india that was another famous case in this case supreme court permitted a living will by the patient that means the patients can develop a living will when they were they were in the senses they can write a will authorizing withdrawal of medical support if they sleep into medically irretrievable conditions so when they are in irreversible coma <clears throat> then it is really possible it is really possible take okay, for medical science to not do anything else okay so at that situation at that situation we can say that the consent of the patient is needed when the patient is not able to provide such kind of consent who will take decision so thereby a concept of living will was established in this case okay while a concept of you can say passive euthanasia was developed in aruna shanbagh's case so supreme court said that we have a fundamental right to a meaningful existence mere animal existence is of no value so thereby the person has a choice to die without suffering that is a right to have a dignified death okay so supreme court has made passive euthanasia legal supreme court also permitted a living will okay so this decision also saves a lot of money and agony to the patients and their families when they are not able to prevent unnecessary pain to terminally ill persons so this is socially and economically a very justified decision okay socially and economically justified decision this is very important for indian context i hope you are able to understand this so we understood the idea of euthanasia okay it came from the new zealand case okay new zealand is coming up with a new law they actually established that law they wanted a referendum of the people now with that we are trying to understand indian context so now what is the difference between this euthanasia suicide and what is involuntary euthanasia remember suicide is self killing we talk about euthanasia okay euthanasia there are different types of euthanasia we have voluntarily euthanasia and we have non voluntary euthanasia there is a difference between non voluntary and involuntary okay so involuntary may get into a category of you can say a murder or a culpable homicide involuntary that means you were not aware and someone gave you some medication to kill you that is called involuntary okay non voluntary which means you were having no capacity to give any kind of consent the capacity was not there due to which your relatives gave the decision okay so voluntarily that means patient himself gives the request okay so that is how the idea is i hope the entire idea is very clear to you yes suicide euthanasia that is voluntary and non voluntary and that is involuntary okay so while we also understand active euthanasia and passive euthanasia do you understand this yes i gave you an example okay so active euthanasia okay is like giving medication and passive euthanasia is withholding those you can say life support system so if we say what why passive euthanasia may be acceptable the analogy we can provide would be let us say there is a house okay and it is burning okay someone you can say some person was on the road he was walking he, he watched that house was burning there were four people inside the house if this person who was capable of entering into the house and we can say rescue those people that was a capability of that person but he did not do that and thereby four people died can we say it is this person due to which this people died no there was no legal duty on him okay so we can't say that because of this person or this guy murdered this people no that is not acceptable okay that is not acceptable and thereby we have to understand that such kind of killing is really there okay okay so thereby it is known as passive euthanasia 
which is legal in India. This is legal in India. We have, you can say, will, okay, living will is acceptable. We don't have active euthanasia in India. So what are the practical issues connected to administering euthanasia? Okay, so it is moral, ethical and legal ground. So, dosto, this is known as ethical, legal, uh, social issues. So, these are known as LCs. Okay, anyway, coming back to this, morally and ethically, both euthanasia processes are very difficult for doctors. Okay, as no doctor like to have their patient die. This is on their moral ground. They do not want their patient to die. So thereby they will do this it is very moral and ethical challenge. Even in the presence of living will, okay, one is honored by his own wishes that look, I can save this person. Why can't I as a doctor? Okay, but he is bound to respect that patient's wishes and thereby this is becoming all the more very complex scenario for doctors. Okay. The patient may have been coerced to write will. The doctors may think in that way. When did he write this will? Living will. Whether he was coerced or not. The will was written at a particular stage. Now we are in a different situation. Circumstances might have changed. Yes or no? So there are a lot of challenges are happening on this living will. Without a foolproof system, doctors cannot give up on patient. However, desperate circumstances are there. So, doctors in today's, you can say, scenario, when the science has progressed to a greater level, okay, they generally do not give up on this. At the same time, at the same time, on this living will, they cannot rely on it. Even with a law on euthanasia, the choice to die may sometimes not be the final prerogative of the patient. Okay. The patient may not decide on it. Okay. If the patient is too ill to decide on the will to leave, the decision makers possibly will be the medical team and patient's relatives and not the patient. And thereby, it is a big challenge. Okay. How doctors rely on the patients, how patients rely on the advice of the doctor. So there may be a lot of trust deficit issues may come into the picture. I hope you are able to understand this. So let us see what are the arguments in favor of euthanasia. There are so many movies were established. There are so many, you can say books have been written on this, the rights in favor on euthanasia. For example, people must have an explicit right to die. Human beings have right to die when and how they want to. What is our, we can say, uh, idea behind it? The idea is that human beings should be free. They should be as free as possible. They are independent biological entities with the right to take and carry out decision about them, themselves, providing greater freedom to their own decisions. So a separate right to die is not necessary. It is already included in right to life. Okay. It is already included in the basic human rights. Right to life is not a right to simply exist. It is not just mere existential right. Okay. Like an animal bhi jita hai. Human wo animal ke mutabik ji raha hai. That is not acceptable. Okay. So what we have to understand here is that right to life is right to have a meaningful life, right to have minimum quality and value in the life. So death is opposite to life. But when the process of dying is a part of life and when there is no minimum quality and value in the life, there is no need to have a life. This is how basic human rights are talking about. Okay. So libertarian argument says that death is a private matter. Okay, so if there is no harm to others, the state and other people have no right to interfere in this. This is really a very broad-minded argument. Okay, some practical argument. Okay, 
it says that really possible we have a possibility of regulating euthanasia so allowing people to die may free up some scarce health resources okay so this is very practical very practical argument saying that if someone has a choice to take a decision that i want to die so that person is removed and one bed is empty philosophical argument it says euthanasia is universalizable now what is the meaning of universalizable it is universal it can be applied to everyone without a particular education without a particular caste without a religion without geographical conditions no constraints are there when the idea of euthanasia has to be provided indeed that is right the person is in the favor of euthanasia argues that giving everybody right to have a good health or good death sorry not health but good death through euthanasia is acceptable as universal principle euthanasia is therefore morally acceptable very good and utilitarian or consequentialist says that euthanasia happens anyway so it is better to regulate it anyway it happens so we all know that when person is into some vegetative state so let's talk about corona when so many people are dying because of corona why because not complete medical system is at their expense okay it is really not possible to provide all complete against a medical support so thereby lot of people die so when lot of people anyway die why can't we legalize it and regulate it this is a very good argument so what do you mean by universalizable so when when we say moral rules must be universalizable so when we talk about moral rules so for example a very good statement says that do unto others as you would have them to do unto you so dusro ke sath waisa hi kaam karo jo aap apne sath kar sakte ho yes or no so when you are doing something for the others theek hai you can do it for others yourself as well so this idea was put by emmanuel kant was a very famous philosopher theek hai he said that those ethical principles that could be acceptable as universal rule theek hai one that is applied to everybody should be accepted so here we are talking about this euthanasia is universalizable do you really think that it is universalizable if yes then that is good so what are the arguments against it so it goes against natural instincts of humans that they are fighting for their survival our natural instinct is we fight for survival okay family members have the moral responsibility to take good care of the aging people but they can misuse this practice to get rid of those old age old age people so this is really not acceptable if they misuse this this is bad it can cause mental distress to medical practitioner who found themselves in the dilemma where to we can say to say true to the uh, hippocratic oath or to follow orders to assist euthanasia so they have to follow their oath or they have to follow this rule so they are in a big challenge it is often argued that even in the case of abolition of capital punishment okay we abolish capital punishment where we can say god is a creator but we cannot take away their life okay god has only a way to we can say take away life humans should not have a right to take away life of the people so this is very good argument provided against euthanasia okay so due to this non availability of procedure or difficulty of carrying out the painless execution okay then also we can't go for euthanasia because not everywhere we have the painless situation not only the exercise can cause extreme pain to person but if it fails then we have a complex scenario okay even not just medically complex but ethically and morally complex scenario okay so this is a very good argument which is against euthanasia another argument is you can say whatever rights we have they are limited by our obligation towards our family and friends 
so that means our life is not just our life but it is a life in connection to our family and friends so we should also take account of our obligations to society and balance our individual right to die as well as the right of other people lastly the argument leaning on the principle of universal ability does not actually provide any positive justification to the you can say any aspect of you can say euthanasia genuine moral rules must be universalizable but universalizability is not enough to say that a rule is satisfactory moral rule so when a moral rule is becoming universal that does not mean that universal aspect is giving a giving a reason that it is satisfactory moral rule so thereby a law which may be termed as universally this idea is prevalent that does not justify that it is satisfactory moral rule so this is very important okay i hope you are able to understand this so what are the international practices if we look at european conventions on human they concluded that a right to life did not give right to self determination over life and death since provision of conventions were aimed at protecting and preserving life they said right to life contains only right to life you don't have a right to take away life so for example in britain there is a suicide act 1961 which acknowledges that you can't punish someone for succeeding at suicide some say that this cannot be taken as a legal backing for allowing euthanasia so this is becoming a challenging issue so what are the measures to be taken for resolving this issue related to euthanasia or administering euthanasia the very important part we should always have a medical attorney okay not just a supreme court but a medical attorney has to be there they take decision okay thus living will make sense when it is approved by the attorney this will also allow a middle way considering all interest of the patient as well as their family member as well as the doctors okay another important part we have a palliative care okay when control over the manner and the timing of person's death has not been and should not be uh, we can say the idea of a medicine because medicine says that we will be in a position to save this people okay so this is what the idea is so india requires very improved healthcare system if we have healthcare system which is in an improved manner then possibly we will be in a position to save people against the misuse of this euthanasia law however when we talk about new zealand jahan se ye baat hui they are reasonably advanced they will be in a position to do that they have less population so they don't have a burden on their health system so they may possibly in a position to achieve good future for their citizens i hope the center idea of euthanasia is very clear to you so my dear students if you like this kind of videos say yes in the comment section we will continue providing providing to you and if you like this videos please you can say subscribe to our channel share it to large number of people and tell to more number of people about pro talent to joining with us okay thank you very much for joining with us and all the best for your preparation you will get this pdf freely on pro talent digital.com i hope it is comfortable for you thank you